M5, bro. Not compatible. DDR5 la. Ayo. Hello and good day to everyone. The Ryzen 7000 series will be on the shelf very very soon and I'm sure there's a lot of question in everyone's mind whether to upgrade to the new series or the platform or not. Well, the processor is not here yet. But we have the next big thing, which is the motherboard. Let's dive in and have a look together at the AM5 platform. Their lineup will consist of the X670E line which will have the X670E Aorus Extreme for their flagship. X670E Aorus Master will be the next in line in the X670E lineup. Having the X670 Aorus Pro AX for their higher end model and the X670 Aorus Elite AX for the more entry level X670 board option. For this video, the board we'll be focusing will be the X670E Aorus Master, which is the one we have right here. Before we begin on the board's feature, let's have a look at the AM5 socket as it's quite a big departure from the current AM4 socket. We did opting for an LGA layout similar to the Intel and AMD's own Threadripper lineup of processor. And if we open up the socket, it looks quite similar to a mini Threadripper socket. Won't you think so? And it is confirmed that all AM4 coolers will be compatible with the AM5 boards. So, for the folks who have a high-end cooler for the AM4 platform, that's one thing that will be easy for you to carry forward and don't need to think of upgrading. Let's jump straight in and look at the VRM layout of the motherboard. The motherboard is using a twin 16 plus 2 plus 2 phase digital VRM layout with a 105 ampere smart power stage and will have two 4 plus 4 or 8 pin power connector. Looking at the VRM heatsink on this motherboard, it's safe to assume that it can pretty much handle everything that will be coming out from the 7000 series lineup from Ryzen. Gigabyte calls their VRM heatsink as Fins Array 3. The heatsink is big and solid at the VRM area to ensure proper cooling on the VRMs. We want to point out as well that the X670E Aorus Master is an EATX form factor sized board with it having a 268mm in length. So make sure your casing won't have any clearance issue for this motherboard. Moving on to the right side of the board, we can see the memory slots for the board, with it having support for the newer DDR5 memory standards. It will have 4 DIMM slots and will have a support for dual channel memory. At the time of recording however, the maximum memory capacity as well as speed is not released yet. But we should expect some higher speed support from DDR5. For the upcoming AM5 platform, AMD will finally have PCIe Gen 5 support with X670E Aorus Master's main PCIe lane and the two of the M.2 slots having Gen 5 support, while the rest of the NVMe slots will be running at Gen 4 speeds. The other two PCIe slots at the bottom will be running on PCIe Gen 4 X4 and PCIe Gen 3 X2 with both of them having a full-size X16 slot for the size. Something that's worth pointing out here for the X670 Aorus Master is the size of the primary NVMe slots heatsink. I mean, just look at it. It's actually massive. Gigabyte calls it the M.2 Thermoguard 3, and there's even heatsink covers for the rest of the M.2, ensuring that all of them will be properly cooled, even during big power transfers. Other than that, all of the M.2 slots will also have the Easy Latch Plus. So I guess we no longer need to worry about losing those pesky small M.2 screws. For the internal headers and pins, there will be 6 SATA 3 ports for this motherboard for the older drives. The board also comes with 8 fan headers, with 3 of them being labelled as AIO pumps. Now for RGB headers, it has 3 12 watt RGB headers and 2 5 watt ARGB headers. The Aorus Master will also have two USB 2.0 headers, two USB 3.2 headers, and one USB 3.2 Type-C headers for the front of your casing, and of course, a front audio header as well for your front audio jack. Now, aesthetically, I really like this board as it has a very simple yet powerful look to it. Now, of course, aesthetic is very personal, but yeah, I think this board certainly looks 
very nice. How much here? Yeah? On to the final area for this motherboard, which is the rear I.O. The board comes with two antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6 that uses the Intel 802.11ax chipset. It also has one HDMI, one display port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type-C, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A, four USB 3.2 Gen 1, and two USB 2.0. You also have one LAN port as well, which is using the Intel i225 2.5 gigabit LAN. So no 10 gigabit LAN for this particular board. And finally, you have your standard array of 3.5 millimeter jack with a speaker and a mic jack, as well as a SPDIF out. With the audio outputs being handled by the Realtek ALC 1220. And that's it for this walkthrough of the Gigabyte X670e Aorus Master. Tell us, what do you guys think of this board? And will you be getting on board for the new AM5 platform? Do stick around and follow us on our channel and Facebook as we'll be pumping out more Ryzen 7000 as well as AM5 content so that you can make a more informed decision on the next generation of Ryzen's. And before we go, we'd like to give a special thanks to Gigabyte Malaysia for letting us have a look at the upcoming X670e boards. That's all from us today. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this video, and of course, follow us on our respective social media. And of course, we hope to see you guys soon with the new Ryzen 7000 right around the corner. Well, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you and goodbye. Stay safe. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video. Remember to like our Facebook page as well as Aorus Malaysia's Facebook page as they will be doing a giveaway for five lucky winners who shares this video out, which we will pick together for. So good luck for anyone that's participating for this giveaway.